Hello there. Well, my hectic career has included three Formula One World Championships, a best-selling trilogy, and 25 years in network television. But then I walked away from it all for a quieter life. I'm Steve Matchett, kind of retired. Join me, won't you? And I'm joined by my good friend Marcel from Unknown Charlotte. Now, we're here today because I've got some exciting news to share with you, and that is the launch of my new little book, Stocking Stuffer Size, in time for the holidays, a day at the races. Marcel, you've read some of the stories inside. What do you think of the book? Actually, let me give you a quick summary of what I think this book is about. All right. On the back, you've got the perfect layout of what it could be about. Most books about Grand Prix motor racing are concerned with the exploits of Daring Do, drivers and engines and gearboxes and pit stops and lap times and cornering speeds and winning and losing. Other books about Grand Prix motor racing are more concerned with love and friendship and kindness and cheese nibbles. <laughs> this is one of those other books. So in very short words, we know that this is not your average Formula One motorsports book. Right, you're, you're absolutely right. When when I first met you guys down here at Unknown Charlotte and Euro Prestige Imports, Cyrus and you very kindly made me the offer to be writer in residence. And I, I thought it was a thrilling idea, but I had no idea what that title meant. What a, writer in residence, what am I going to do? Uh, but I have a little desk upstairs, a little writing desk, and I sat up there one day overlooking the, what I would consider a little magical world within a world down here, which is Unknown Charlotte. It's a safe space, we're surrounded by friends. We all know each other. We're all more than happy to help one another. And I began to think, you know, the idea of making a story or a series of stories about a little safe, magical world where kindness and friendship and loyalty still matter, that appeals to me. And we all know, you know, the world is uh, not in a good place in many ways. The four corners of the globe, there's unrest and wars and all of that. And I like the idea of, of remembering that kindness matters. Or if we can just do one kind thing every day, I believe, genuinely believe it will make a difference. And so what I wanted to do with, with this book was create a magical world. So I asked a friend of mine, an illustrator, Brian Tritch, to draw three characters sitting on the ground. I don't know if you can pick this up on the camera. Uh, so we have a young girl, her dog, and a donkey. And they are sitting on the ground in a little magical world somewhere in the countryside of deep England, perhaps in 1900, 1920, something like that. Um, after school playtime, they're sitting on the ground and looking to a row of trees in the distance and imagining, as kids used to do back then, right? Using their imagination and creating magical worlds and thinking, what are we seeing through the trees there? What little magical world is unfolding there? And with my background in Formula One, I like that idea of intermixing this sweet little innocent scene with the machinations of Formula One. And uh, so that's what I did, like, you know, several short stories, uh, but all based around that same illustration, just with just that idea of having a bit of tongue in cheek fun with Formula One, but also, again, encouraging the gentle reader to remember kindness, kindness, loyalty and friendship. It's all that matters in the world. A better message cannot be said at times like this, but this is going to stand the test of time It could for humanity altogether. I've had an opportunity to read a couple of the stories here. It intertwines both the magical fairy tale lands and the technical aspects of Formula One, which is kind of very interesting and super unique. Please read us the introduction that you have for the book because it gives us a little taste of what motivated you to write this book as well. Yeah, with, with pleasure. Well, if you'd like to pick up a copy of the book, I'll leave a link below. But basically, it's just a matter of going on Amazon and putting Steve Matcher today at the races. It'll take you straight to it. Okay. It's nine ninety nine. It's about the price of one posh coffee, so I think it's priced right. And um, I like the idea that it's just released in time to be a little stocking stuffer gift for people. I think I think that's the best way of getting this book out there into the market. And so this is my introduction. 
Legend has it that writers will stare out of their windows for months, sometimes years, all idly twiddling their thumbs with absolutely nothing to show for their outstanding commitment to shirking work of any kind. As to explain themselves, they say they are awaiting inspiration, that sudden flash of creative energy that sends them dashing around the house looking for pencils and typewriters. Alas, they can avoid work no longer. I cannot speak to the truth of such myths beyond my sharing with you that I do very much enjoy watching the world go about its business through my window, and that from the very moment I set eyes on the artwork of these three mesmeric characters from a bygone age, all three sitting on the ground gazing out towards distant trees, I knew I had to write of them. There is love in this picture. There is innocence and friendship and compassion too. Above all, however, there is the intoxicating essence of pure, unconditional kindness. We all need a little unconditional kindness in our lives. That is all these tiny tales are intended to achieve, to highlight the need for kindness. They have been a delight to write, and I hope you'll enjoy reading them. Steve, I thought when you first came in, we wanted to bring you out of retirement, but lo and behold, you've never left retirement, and you've continued to follow your dreams and execute and bring us another book, but now something that we can bring humanity a little bit closer together. So it's been our pleasure and it's been our honor to have you not only grace us with your presence and working together, but also keeping your work alive and moving forward. That's very sweet of you to say thank you very much. Check the book out on Amazon. I hope you'll enjoy it. Thanks, Marcel. Cheers.